Do you guys remember when Professor Conway came into the class and announced to us that a serial killer was here in Philadelphia? What were you guys thinking when she proceeded to tell us that two women had been killed and more were being raped and strangled? How did you feel when she said it could be you, your mother, your girlfriend, or your sister? Um, two days after my informative speech, I went to a discussion led by Women in War Zones, which is based here in Philadelphia, a nonprofit organization that raises awareness for sexual violence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. There I met a girl, 13 years old, who told us about her experience. This girl was named Bijou and she was 13 years old. So now I'm going to tell you, oh, um, Bijou is a French word that means gem or jewel. I'm going to tell you her story that she told us. On her way home, she was attacked by six members of the Interhamway. For those of you who don't know, the Interhamway are members of the Rwandan rebel group who escaped from Rwanda to avoid pr prosecution for acts against humanity. So as they dragged her into the forest, they raped her one by one. After they were done, they started shoving sticks, knives, and their guns inside of her. And then they left her in pain and humiliation. This girl cried about how she had to go to the hospital and that these men had punctured her vagina and rectum to the point where she was constantly leaking feces. Her family had banished her and she was rejected by the entire village. My heart ached for the amount of pain that she had gone through. So today, I will be talking to you about one of the deadliest wars that is going on right now in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I have done lots of research on BBC News. I have spoken with my father who is Congolese. And I have partaken in organizations such, such as Women in War Zones, Falling Whistles, and Vagina Monologues. I will be answering these three questions. What is going on in the Democratic Republic of Congo? What the world can do to promote change? And what you guys as individuals can do? Right now, in the eastern part of the Congo, there are rebels from Rwanda, Burundi, and Uganda that are trying to take over the mines. There are also um, Congolese rebels that oppose foreign occupation. But what the government has done to try to promote stability has, is to incorporate these rebels into their own national army. So the, all, collectively, all these men are guilty of acts against humanity. They are the reasons why 6.9 million, 6.9 million people have died over the past 15 years. The reason why they're in the Congo is because Congo is because of Congo's vast mineral wealth. They, it is known for having gold, diamonds, coltan, and tantalum. Tantalum and coltan are very prominent in the resources in the technology such as laptops, computers, and cell phones. Because the world is in high demand of these minerals, one, point, um, no, one million dollars of minerals are being smuggled out of the country, and these mines produce millions of pounds of minerals a day. These rebels are taking over 90% of these mines. To exert their control, what they do is they rape and pillage the um, civilians. 70% of the women are being raped today or, um, during... Um, during this conflict, women from the age, uh, little girls from the ages of two years old and women as old as 80 are being raped. And I'm not talking about by one person, but by six people, men, or 12, and multiple times. They are being used as sex slaves. They have seen their husbands and children killed, and they have even been, and some have even been forced to eat their children. These men have no remorse, and they suffer no ramifications of the crimes that they have committed. Even if they are put in jail, they are able to bail themselves out with just two dollars. Think about it. What if people here could bail themselves with two dollars? The issue is that in the Congo there's a lack of awareness. The UN, because of its, this multifaceted conflict, the UN has been talking about pulling out. Little coverage from um, New York Times and CNN there's little coverage to what is now called the silent holocaust. So what can the, do, the world do to promote this change? I will first give you my proposal. I will explain it and how it works. And then I will tell you how it has worked in the past. 
I sincerely believe that people, once people are informed, they are going to be more inspired to take action and more pressure will be put on authorities for a faster rev resolution or response. Today, we are living in what is called a social media revolution, which is a democratic movement that emphasizes some of journalism's key factors, honesty, transparency, and giving a voice to a person who doesn't have one. Social networking sites such as Facebook and Twitter are we can use to our advantage because news can travel across borders um, without custom documentation and it can travel fast requiring peacekeepers and people making resolutions to have a faster response. Facebook was deemed one of the best softwares for col um, collaborating and creating um, solutions for global problems because you can easily make applications such as the like button. You can access it very easily and it is simple for people to uh, for beginners to use. So why not use this to our advantage? Why not spread the word using Facebook and Twitter and blogging about it? This has worked um, during the earthquakes in Haiti in January 2009. BBC was able to use tweets and um, reports from reporters to give a, paint a vivid picture of the catastrophe that was occurring. Even CNN has a um, website called iReport where you can upload materials. So what can you as individuals do? De the Declaration of Human Rights, Article 3, states that everyone has the right to life, liberty, and the security of a person. What is going on in the Democratic Republic of Congo is not following the statement at all. What I want you to do is spread the word. I want you to get angry, and I want you to be enraged. I want you to blog about it. These people are suffering immensely. They're being attacked in the most unimaginable ways, and the worst part about it is they have no one to protect them, and they have no voice to speak out. So I want you guys to use your voice to speak out. This is what I want you to do. I want you, once you leave this room, I want you to tell five people about Bijou's story and about what is going on, and have them tell five people. And before you know it, this story is going to spread like wildfire. I want you to go to fallingwhistles.com and tell the story of Falling Whistles, about how little boys, too young to carry a gun, are given whistles and placed to the, in the front lines of battle. Unable to defend themselves, they are shot and their bodies are used as barricades. I want you to get upset and use Facebook, Twitter, write it on your statuses because you, because I sincerely believe that you and by speaking out can ultimately create a domino effect of men going to jail for their crimes permanently, re reducing the amount of rapes and killing in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and ultimately protecting all the gems out there. Thank you.